Emily here with National Corporate Training. Principles of Assessment, we're going to go through reliability. So here's a little mnemonic to help you remember. Very fast red Ferrari, the four principles, valid, fair, reliable, flexible. Okay, so when it, we talk about reliability, what do we want to accomplish here? Okay, your assessment tool that you're creating, the whole system. So we're talking your methods, your instruments that you're using, if that's a verbal question, a demonstration, a case study, an observation, um, short answer questions, case, uh, role play, whatever it is, okay, all that, okay, you've got your maps included in there, your assessment plan, your training assessment strategy, your TAS, DAS, LAS, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you might have an implementation guide or an assessor's guide or teacher's guide. That All of that documentation, making up your entire assessment system, we want it to be reliable, bulletproof, okay? Bulletproof meaning, if I'm a brand new assessor, don't, don't know your program, don't know your cohort, and I take a look at your assessment system, I'm going to have such a clear picture on exactly what the standard is, exactly what's being asked, exactly how to administer everything, that I would literally administer the assessments the exact same way that you would. I would make the same assessment decisions if we were judging the same evidence. I'd make the same assessment systems or assessment decisions that you would. And the, the course would basically look the same as if you were running it or I was running it because the system itself can be trusted. You put all your trust into it, it's bulletproof, and when the candidates go through the process of the whole assessment experience, whether it's you or whether it's me, we're going to spit out the same competency level, the same assessment decision on the other side, okay? So the system is what does the work. It doesn't matter who you put in to do it because it's so clear. What makes it clear? Instructions. Um, and I would say like assessment guidance notes, or you might call it a you know an answer guide, an answer key. So when you talk about instructions, you're really talking about probably three different types of instructions. So first of all, instructions for the candidate. And this isn't, hey, write your answers below. The type of instructions I'm talking about is, okay, am I writing? Can I type? Does it have to be complete sentences? How many sentences? Can I do dot point form? Can I use another resource or Google or do I have to just use my memory? Is there a time frame or a time limit? Can I answer these questions now and then maybe tomorrow in class? Does my observation, is there a time limit on that or certain resources I have to use? Or, um, can I work in pairs or in groups or do I have to do this independently? All those sorts of things that I would have questions as a candidate, what's your expectation of me? It's clearly written. It's, it's like writing the obvious, okay? So you just write, write, it, write it down. Yep, I want you to write in complete sentences with black pen, with your dominant right or left hand. <laughs> I mean, just write the obvious, yeah? The second part of the uh, instructions is for the assessor, and that really has to do with how do I administer this? So as an assessor, do I need to make sure, for example, and some of that, you might have candidate assessor instructions that can look the same a little bit, but as an assessor, do I have to make sure I have something ready for the, for the candidates to complete this? For example, do they have to have a piece of software or um, do they have to you know, complete it on a particular computer um, or using a particular tool or a piece of equipment? Do I need to make sure that you know, they're put in in their own place in the class or wherever we are, so they're doing their work independently. Am I allowed to give feedback? What kind of feedback am I allowed to give? How much help can I give the candidate? Can I come around and, you know, give new contextualization and, and all that sort of thing? Or are they meant to just sort of figure this out with the skills and knowledge that they have? How, um, how involved can I be in that process as an assessor? Do I need to make sure that I'm timing this? Can I, you know, allow the, them to do it over a period of classes? Or as an assessor, how do I administer it? And then how do I use it? Use the actual document. So let's say it's um, a demonstration and they're demonstrating two or three times. Do you want me to put the date in the little box or just a tick? And if I'm taking a photo, 
do I just upload that or do I need to print it out, put the student's name on it, the unit code and title name on that picture? Should I download a timestamp app so that I'm t when I take the pictures, a timestamp of the date and the time that I took it? I'm just, I need some clarity here as an assessor. How do I administer this and then how do I actually use it so that I'm ticking it and signing it and doing that whole thing the right way as though you would want me to? So you're writing this whole thing as though it's for someone else to do, not for yourself. And that just, that makes it clear, which makes it reliable. And then lastly, how do, how do you receive, uh, how does the candidate receive an overall satisfactory result? So do they need to get all 10 short answer questions correct or can they only get eight correct and they get an overall satisfactory result? You know, do they need to uh, do all the items in the observation checklist in one performance? Or if I see it, can I say I saw it? And then if I see it somewhere else at another time, then can I say I saw it? Or does it, how, how do they get a satisfactory result? And it might be obvious, but just write it down, okay? Because that's what makes it reliable. And then, you know, when are the assessments due or when do they start? Is there a timeline? Look at the assessment plan and see where, where in there it talks about the, the, the assessment actually being administered on a timeline basis it, within like a calendar. And then also from um, a training assessment strategy standpoint, what resources do I need? Is there a list of resources there and equipment and all that sort of thing, whether it's physical or human resources? Is there an explanation of admin that needs to get done? You know, how do I know the process that's happening before and after the assessment process? Is it, is it list in there somewhere? How do the students, how do the candidates find out about the assessments? Do we have an induction day? Do they come in and sign all the paperwork? Do I do a pre-screening or a pre-interview with students? Um, do I send them out an email or a letter telling them, hey, this is when class starts? how does that whole thing work? So it's not just how do I administer assessments themselves individually, then what's the whole process look like, which is where your, your um, assessment plan and your training assessment strategy comes in. That's all part of reliability. The whole point is you want to take that bad boy, and you'd be able to give it to someone else without having to explain anything to them, and they can just go, yep, I get it. I think I can run with this. Awesome. Now, with the um, answer guide, you want to give answers. So if you're looking for an answer, if it's multiple choice, you tell them it's A, B, C, or D. If it's a short answer question and, and it's subjective, then give some criteria. For example, if, you're, if, you've, if the short answer question asks something about, hey, name an, an experience where you felt you were uh, not attended to properly uh, from a customer service standpoint when you went into a store one day. And then they're going to write down the answer. But what am I looking for as an assessor? Now, if it's subjective, you're going, oh, there's no right answer. Yeah, but you can give me some guidance. For example, you might say um, answer needs to include a specific event. The event needs to be described in how, in the in describing the feeling that happened and a description of the actual um, encounter or occasion, uh, you know, and you're just giving me a little bit, oh, okay, so I'm looking for, okay, yep, they definitely gave me it, what they felt. They definitely gave me the um, occasion. Yep, okay, cool, so I can take that as satisfactory, right? So as much as we can, we want to give the answers. Hmm, so reliability, and, and when it comes to the AQ, AQF level, you, you want to be sure that the assessor is going to assess at the appropriate level. So if you've got a Cert 1 happening and you're, you've given your assessment system to someone else to do the assessment. So for example, if you've got a Cert 1 level course and you've given your assessment system to someone else to do and they are judging it too harshly, so they're judging it at a level 4, that's, your, that's, that's the system's problem. So we need to I, outline, remember this is a certificate one level. Specifically, this is all the candidate needs to do. It's very basic. Do not have this expectation of the candidate. Do not expect them to solve their own problems and come up with all these solutions in different varied contexts and be able to transfer the skills and knowledge into higher level things when it's Cert 1. So make sure you outline that if that needs to be said. Okay? So reliability is about the whole system being bulletproof, 
about giving it to someone else and they're running with it the same way that you would. So you can trust the system. And that's uh, reliability.